Portable Pota Power, Portable Amplifiers, and the Pota Spotting Page, this time on Mailbag Monday. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to K8 MRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. If you have an amateur radio-related question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com, and you just may have one of your questions featured on an episode of Mailbag Monday. Guys, we have three great questions for you today, so let's dive right in. This first viewer is asking, this is the second time I've asked the Poda Wizard Mm -hmm. a question. Uh, are there any electrical power requirements for running a station when doing a POTA activation? An example would be, could I use my portable power station like a Jackery, an Anchor, a Blue Eddy? Uh, can you operate from the front seat of your car with it turned off but the radio plugged into a 12-volt power outlet? So, uh, yes, you can, uh, <laughs> you can do a lot of things. The only thing you're limited by is really your radio's power consumption and your power supplies... Uh, power output. So, for example, you could just use uh, a, a, a lithium iron phosphate battery like this Bioeno. This is a 20 amp hour battery. This will last you hours and hours and hours. Simply plug in your radio to the power poles and get on with your life and get on with POTA. I do this quite a lot. I activate for my car fairly often, and uh, I don't use my car's battery. I, I use uh, one of the one of the battery boxes that I've built. So this here is called Little Geek. I've got Uh, Anderson power poles on here that are switched. It has a meter so you can monitor uh, your current consumption and how much you've used, your state of charge, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Very, very handy. And then I've got a little uh, USB outlet there as well. Maybe you're logging with your phone or something or your computer. You can keep those charged up. I've got a bigger version of that. This is called Big Geek. Inside both of these are are BioNO batteries. This has a 30 amp hour battery. The other one has a uh, 12 amp hour battery in there. And uh, just depending on what rating I'm taking, it'll be uh, determine which battery box I build. But very lightweight. I just keep this in the back seat of the car and uh, plug my 891 into this, into the one of the power poles, and uh, you're on the air. Now, with one of those Jackery type boxes, this is one I just got from uh, Oscal. They just contacted me and asked if I'd review this. Uh, these are great for like portable power. Um, not the greatest for 12 volt power. Yes, there are 12 volt outlets on this uh, right here, uh, but the max current draw from this particular one, I can't speak for others, is only 10 amps. So if we're running a 100 watt radio, uh, we're actually gonna be pulling more current uh, than what this is capable of delivering. Uh, so you uh, basically, you're just not gonna get the full output power from the radio. You may cause some damage to this if it's if it's really putting a, a, a drain on it. Uh, I, I don't think you'd really have much to worry about, but it could. Um, so I personally would just get a battery. Honestly, they're, uh, especially the Bioenos, like Kevin, the owner of Bioeno, is a ham. They're, they're really big in the ham radio universe. So I personally would use a battery over a, a power station like this, but if you're if you're using QRP, uh, if you're not running 100 watts, uh, you you could absolutely you know probably 50 watts. Uh, you could you could definitely use the 12 volt output from this. So uh, it really doesn't matter so long as you're uh, on the radio and your power supply is able to deliver what the radio wants. Absolutely, sitting in your car is a thing that is no problem whatsoever. It's totally within the rules of POTA. So get out there, have fun, and I hope to catch you on the air. Thanks for writing in. Next, we have a question regarding amplifiers. This viewer is writing, Good afternoon, Mike. I'm contemplating buying a 50-watt amplifier for my Zygu G90. And when I asked the seller if it would work okay, they said this, It will work as long as the signal input is no more than 5 watts. I don't understand amps that well, so have you ever done a tutorial or video on power amps? Uh, The G90 is, as you know, only 20 watts, and I would like to be able to pop it up to at least 50 watts for POTA. Uh, What are your thoughts and thanks in advance, blah, blah, blah. So I I have done some reviews on some amplifiers. I'm not, uh, at least in the ham radio universe, the most learned person about amplifiers, but I do have some. Uh, So I have this. uh, Let's go to this camera here. I have this. This is the MX P50M. Amplifier. This thing is awesome. Although uh, my good friend, uh, Mister the Smoking Ape, did some reviews on this and found that it uh, is is 
slightly less than spectrally pure but uh at a little over 100 bucks maybe 150 bucks this is a cool 50 it's really about a 45 watt amplifier uh it's you do have to manually change the bands with this switch here but uh it's it's pretty darn cool and works works quite well with uh i haven't put it up with the g90 but it, i've used it with the 705 and uh it should work with just about any uh any radio you can throw at it i also have the xpa 125b i know for a fact this works great with the g90 you do need their little digital interface this is a 100 watt uh 125 watt amplifier not sure which one you're looking at but um you can take a look at uh, some of the reviews i've done on those now in terms of uh you were asking about uh, signal input being no more than five watts. So basically, to, to keep it real simple, an amplifier is going to take a small signal and it's going to turn it into a big signal through electronic wizardry, okay? Now, what, what happens is the, radio, the amplifier is designed to uh, have a specific amount of input power. So basically your G90, you're probably gonna wanna turn down to maybe two, three, four, maybe five watts. That's the output power of the G90, but then it's gonna go into the amplifier and it's gonna amplify it. So you don't wanna put too much power in there, otherwise we can overdrive our amplifier. And to simplify it even more, to, to kind of show you what would happen Number one, if you're putting too much power into the amplifier, you, you could actually damage it. Uh, but the other thing that happens, and you'll see this from time to time, uh, if you have a radio that has a waterfall, you'll see a, a signal that's really wide. Chances are that station is overdriving their amplifier. And I can show you what this means if, if we relate to the music world. I'm sure that you have an understanding of like a clean guitar tone and a distorted guitar tone. Well, distortion is actually called overdrive and you're actually overdriving the amplifier to give you that cool gritty sound so when we're putting in a good signal say that five watts or less you get a clean guitar tone and it sounds like this but when we jump into overdrive or distortion so if we're putting more power into the amplifier than it's rated we get this overdriven or distorted sound like this now, while that's good in the music world, it's not so good in the ham radio world because you're going to get splatter. So you're going to be transmitting your signal. You know, ideally, we want it three kilohertz or wider. You want a nice, clean signal. But if you're overdriving your amp, your signal, I've seen signals that are that are eight, 10 kilohertz wide because they're overdriving their amp so much. So that's really the more important to me spectral purity putting out a clean signal uh, so really that's why you don't want to put more power into the amplifier uh, than what it's rated for so uh, if you're concerned about it drop it down to four watts honestly between 20 watts and 50 watts you're not going to see that huge of a difference it's about a, a slightly more than half of uh, one s unit but uh, hey, every little bit helps. You know, I have amplifiers. I use them from time to time. So uh, they certainly can help. But please don't overdrive your amps. Hopefully that answer, uh, answers your question. And thanks for writing in. Lastly, we have a question about spotting on the POTA page. This viewer writes in, Hi, Mike. I follow and enjoy your ham radio videos. Thank you. I'm somewhat new to POTA and do not know how to spot activators when they ask me to spot them. Can you give me, us, some guidance on the matter I would be happy to show you how to do this. This is a very important thing. Sometimes uh, we need to have somebody spotted to, to help us get our activation going. So uh, it's actually very, very easy. Let's hop over on the internet machine and I will show you exactly how to spot. So the first thing we need to do is to go to poda.app and go to the poda website. Now you'll see here, uh, we, we need to be signed in to actually spot someone. And if you don't have an account, just simply click this sign in button That'll bring you to this page, and if you don't have an account, just hit this sign up button, and uh, you can you can sign up various different ways, but uh, that's what you need to do. So we're gonna go ahead and sign in. Now you can see, uh, here's my call sign at the top, and here, this little button right here is where we're actually gonna add a spot. So uh, if you are spotting someone else in this activator call sign, so let's say Whiskey One Alpha Whiskey is out there doing a POTA, we're gonna put their call sign in. 
I would be the spotter in this case because I'm sitting home spotting this guy. And uh, let's say they're on everyone's favorite frequency, 7200. We're just going to type 7200. We do this in kilohertz. We don't put uh, the 7.200. Notice we'll get uh, a little error there. So just put it all in kilohertz. And then here we're going to put their park reference, 3019. And uh, I'm actually, if we're, if we're spotting ourselves, we would just put our own call sign in there. So for, for uh, test sake, we'll just use my own call sign. And down here in the comments, I'll generally like to put uh, just whatever their signal report is, uh, you know, 5'9 in Texas, 2x2 two two in Texas, whatever. Doesn't matter. In this case, I'm just going to put uh, this is only a test. And that's all you need to do. And then you hit spot. And now you can see this uh, is spotted now. Now, for me, because I spotted myself, this will always be up here. So if I go to this POTA spotting page, uh, if you want to respot someone, maybe you just worked this K9ABR, you can click this respot button and it'll automatically populate. Again, you can put in whatever comments you want, and then hit spot. I'm going to hit cancel in this uh, case. Uh, and it's just that easy. Again, you do need to have an account, so make sure you do that. Now, if you're spotting yourself, and you're done with your activation. It's a good practice to go ahead and hit the respot, and we're just gonna mark ourselves QRT. And you can see uh, here it said this spot will be marked as QRT, and then uh, hit the spot again, and you can see here I'm QRT. That way people who are looking for you aren't just sitting on frequency when you're not in fact actually there. So very, very easy. So great question. Thanks for writing in. I'm sure a lot of people have that. We get uh, new people joining POTA every day. It is growing exponentially, and it is an amazing thing that POTA has taken on uh, the way it has. So thanks for writing in. Guys, if you have a question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. Just put Mailbag Monday in the subject, and you may have your question featured on an episode of K8MRD Radio Stuff. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next Monday, 73.